Thanks for tuning in. Today's podcast, we meet Ingrid Vargas, a nice young lady that I got to meet during a photography exhibition, but it turns out she's an up-and-coming film director. Uh, We chat about art, Calgary, and all kinds of cool stuff. Um, Dabble into me insulting her about eating disorders. That uh, worked out well for me. But um, uh, give it a listen. Let me know what you think. And I want to thank Ingrid for uh, um, giving me the time of day. I'll text him. I'll tell him that I forgot. Okay, and then I'll swing by Phil and said maybe sometime this week if you're there. I bet you know, uh, yeah. I'm or if you guys go shooting again, let <clears throat> me know. Yeah, we we're starting to date again, which is nice. We broke. You're up starting to date again. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. We were, we just I don't know. Couldn't really find the time, uh, time, energy, <laughs> focus, any of that shit. We're recording, aren't we? We are. Yeah. Oh great! This is classic, classic. Uh, yeah, it's classic intro. We'll see if we use any of this, actually. This is actually way more conversational than previously. I mean, it could be funny. Cold out, you take my cold. are you Ingrid? I'm doing well. It's been uh, physically I haven't seen you since July? I think so. Or June even? No we went out for coffee a while back. Yeah Curtis does spill coffee all over me that one time. Oh. Curtis. <laughs> He's in risk management there's yeah. irony for you. Okay so <clears throat> I mean catch me up. I know a little bit about you. We met. How do we meet? Um, How, how did, did we, we meet? meet? I think Instagram? Yeah. Because you were reaching out to local photographers. For my second group show yeah. at, at my office and at you, Phil and Sebi's. You mission. wanted a lady to be a part of it. I think that there are too many men who tell people what they're supposed to be doing. And uh, why the fuck wouldn't we want female photographers? I think all the female photographers and creatives that I have met are, uh, I was going to say better. <laughs> <laughs> but then I'm going to lose all these... Uh, mansplaining guys there's a there's a lot of mansplaining in the photo world that's (laughs) why i avoid it (laughs) so let's talk about that a little (laughs) bit okay so let's start with uh when was our show when was the show that you were in was it april it was in may may or end of april okay what was it like how did we meet and uh how did you get involved um we met for coffee and then you just wanted to bounce ideas back and forth because i don't think that show had like a solid theme no but it was just like what do you have and i was like i have these things would that work um and we went off that your stuff was great uh i'll i'll uh, audioly describe them but they were film Mm -hmm. they were pictures of uh, flowers petals yeah i think i don't remember if there were all of them but um they weren't all there was a floral theme for sure um Um, smaller what size were the actual images I actually don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember either. Maybe <laughs> but they were quite seven. small. Like, I, I like smaller prints. Makes you go in and look at them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, you were the only female of that four. Yeah. I think that was with Scott Mallow, who's uh, illegitimate. Someone um, thought that his photos were mine. Oh. <laughs> and it was really funny. Because they're like, funny. oh, you, you're so young. You took these. And I was like, uh, actually, S- no. Cinematic. <laughs> <laughs> um, Louis Villanueva, mm-hmm. did I pronounce that right? Yes. Sounds right. And Danny, Danny Long. Yeah. Um, Danny. Yeah, Danny's fun. I haven't seen Danny in months either, um, but I hope he's doing good. No, I think he's doing well. And uh, yeah, how did how did that go for you? What, what was that like working with perspectives? I think we were already called perspectives at the time. Yeah, you were. Okay. I think showing my work is always like hard for me because there comes like this vulnerability with it but it felt fine like it was mostly just friends and family that came 
Um, but it is intimidating to to be the only girl amongst all these like mm. photo dudes mm. who are like techie and like they're like, oh, a shoot on a Leica, and they bring their cameras with them. And Goddamn then, gas! It's just like, oh. <laughs> yeah. can we just not enjoy the pictures? Do we have to look at the machine? This is why I but, I struggle to call myself a photographer, and now I don't like calling myself a photographer per se, even though I I know I am. Is mm-hmm. the gas? The gas. Actually, Kyle and I were just joking about how everything in the computer and tech world is all about dick measuring. Like I just read <laughs> Canon's and uh, like rumoring a 75 megapixel full frame set. Who cares? Like, <laughs> it's just a camera. It's just a camera. I mean, I hate saying that because like it is, it is so important. Like the the um, the mediums you use, they do have value. But I don't like it when the focus shifts just to like, oh, I shot it on this instead of like this is what I was feeling when I shot this. Well, I like that. Let's talk about that. I mean, how are you doing what you're doing and thinking what you're thinking? Tell me about how um, you're approached into art and uh, and why film and photography and uh, and we'll get into movie making, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I think I'm a filmmaker more than I am a photographer, but photography is just what I do on the side when I'm, I'm not necessarily like actively pursuing filmmaking just because that's harder to do because you need more people and um, fleshing it out isn't just as easy as picking up a camera and, and shooting it. Like a lot of thought goes into it and a lot of teamwork and communicating. So yeah, photography is my way of visually expressing myself and trying to tell a story, but it's really just feeling for me. <laughs> like it's it's more emotional in it. Um, I always compare to, like, I haven't taken pictures in months, to be honest. I haven't picked up a camera in a while. But when I do, it it feels like epiphany. Like, I just see something and I take a picture of it. And there's this excitement that comes with it that it's, well, I'm sure everyone who takes photos knows what I mean. But that's how I approach photography mostly. So maybe to put that in context, um, you know, when do you find art? When do you take your first picture are you doing film first like uh, what's what's art in your life art in my life Ooh, i wouldn't call myself an artist honestly Mm. uh i think i have many years of experience to gain before i can be like i'm an artist but i don't know i just i like to see beauty in things and i think that's how most artists would feel and it's also like very moody and emotional for me. So sometimes like I'm very uninspired and I won't write anything or do anything in particular. I'll just be. And then other times it's, it kind of just like, it's like, yeah, like I've, I vomit inspiration and words like I'm doing now. I like all of how you approach art in the sense that, um, I mean, yeah, like, I don't know why you hesitate to call yourself an artist. This, maybe a cultural pressure that experience, age, gender, all this stuff plays a role in how people ought to see you. But I don't know. I mean, I've known you for eight months-ish, and I think you're an artist. Thanks. Yeah. I I do think, well, I don't want to be, like, ageist. For me right now, at least, it's kind of gaining that confidence to be like, yeah, I am this and it's something I'm slowly but surely developing. And even like in the film community, like it's hard for me to be like, oh yeah, like I made this thing, you should watch it. Um, I try not to talk about it too much unless prompted. But yeah, I, I think it'll come with time. And yeah, I hope one day I can I can be more confident in my work. If we're honest right now, it's always like, Aah! but. I think hearing that, I mean, obviously I've went through that. It took me a long time to figure that out, but. If there's one thing that I'm trying to use perspectives for, it's to push you guys to do that. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Push us, you do. And I actually really, I appreciate that, that you're doing that um, within like the Calgary arts community because you're giving young artists a platform as well and a platform just for people to show their work and get used to, to doing that. So thank you. Well, you're, uh, I don't know. Yeah, thank you, I guess is the correct response. I I don't know. I mean, I, I when I look at this city uh, and I meet someone like you, um, whether you're young or old, whether it's a new approach or a seasoned one, um, 
there's this weird tension in Calgary, which I speak about a lot, where we have a lot of that can't, don't, and won't uh, mm -hmm. narratives in our minds. You know, what you spoke about earlier about um, this emotional contact with some subject matter. And certainly, honestly, I, I, as much as I'm a bully, I mean, I think Ingrid, if, <laughs> if it's not about food, then don't send me in. But, <laughs> okay, I'll just fuck off. <laughs> yeah, but um, if something does happen, and let's say it's on your iPhone or your whatever, if you're not on an iPhone, like your uh, data phone, camera phone, or on a, you know, something. Um, shit, I, I'm even gonna, I, I want to accept everything. Like if it's a poem or like a something, just anything we can project visually. Um, and I don't want it to be, you know, cinematic and anamorphic. Like I, I don't care. <laughs> well, that's the funny thing. Like I don't always care about those tech specs, but sometimes I do. But I just think that's what film school did to me. And it, it, it kind of, I'm so thankful that I went but it also like really ruined um, that freedom of just like creating on a whim. Cause I used to like, as a teenager, I would just make random stuff all the time and I didn't know anything about anything. And I was like, oh, it's great. But then it got really intimidating once you learned what things do and how they should look or the quality of things. So that that's something I'm, I've been like purging from my mentality when I approach um, art. Cause I don't, I don't need that to hold me back. But sometimes it, it, it does, for sure. Yeah, like what's film school? Where did you go? And um, I went to SAIT. So they have a two-year program. Uh, it's very hands-on and technical, which I think was good for me because I'm more on like the like artsy side of things. So I learned a lot. But I remember for the longest time, like after I graduated or even during school, like watching films for me was so painful because I couldn't – enjoy them in the same way that I used to. Um, I wouldn't react to them the same way, like emotionally, which is like why I loved watching films in the first place was just like the feelings that they'd, I mean, sometimes they were terrible feelings and you'd feel just really depressed after, <laughs> but sometimes it was just like, I'd get like emotional hangovers from watching things. And then after that, I would always just be like, I wonder how they, how they set up that shot or how much this was, or like what their budget was or what camera they used. And and it it took away that magic for me, but I think the magic's still there. I just need to find it again and in different ways. Yeah, there's maybe what's a good like willful ignorance or something. I mm -hmm. I get it. I I mean, I used to be I, what I considered a movie buff. Not one of these people that could um, you know random fact check IMDb or something. But I <laughs> used to be obsessed with movies. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of the reasons why my photography is photography like image uh, manipulation is what it is because uh, i love the idea of narratives and i love the idea of um, showing some kind of moment and uh, while i never studied film i think um, just learning anything about anything seems to take away <laughs> you know some i don't know like uh yeah that childishness that feeling of fun and joy mm -hmm. but one of the ways that you can get that back is by just acting a fool all the time. It's fun. Yeah. I'm, I'm loving it. No, totally. No, I, I, I try to put myself in that mentality when I do make something. Or, like, lately I've I've been just using, like, a point and shoot to not worry about, like, my aperture and this and that. Like, mm -hmm. my shutter speed. It's just like, no, I see something. I take a picture because I like it. But I don't need to focus on, on these tech specs. That, yeah, they're so useful and they're so great and they're part of any photographer's craft. But I just don't need to worry about that right now where I'm at at least, so. Yeah, I, no, I love that. I, my shoe with my little, I mean, my camera's not cheap, but uh, yeah, <laughs> with my little uh, Humble EM5. Brag. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, what I mean is like, it's not a point and shoot mm -hmm. and it's not an old like 35 mil that I dug up in a thing. It's like a, it's a fairly expensive, you know, mirrorless camera. But now with all of the so-called dick measuring, it's not comparable. It's considered a piece of crap. Uh, it, nobody talks about Olympus anymore. They all talk about Sony's because they have the full frames and you know, blah, 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 blah. But you know what I love about my camera is I've been noticing this a lot. When I started, I was thinking it has to be full manual all the time and I have to understand this. And, and it's good for learning, right? Mm -hmm. But now, you know, I'm, I'm on auto ISO, aperture priority. Um, when I have my flash, I use exposure compensation. I don't care. I just yeah. hit it and I just try to be in that moment. And so my shutter actuations are like probably close to 250,000. Like I, <laughs> um, I'm not treating my camera as, uh, you know, as a valuable piece of uh, machinery. It's just 
a part of the tool that we use to create a moment. Um, but it sounds like, I mean, isn't that what filmmaking is meant to be? It, it isn't in actual fact. It's, <laughs> it's so technical. Yeah. It's heartbreaking. Um, not, I don't mean that in a bad way, but like when you're on set, you're just like, holy shit, the amount of technical labor that goes into it is incredible and, and so rewarding for the people doing it, but also so intimidating. Um, so like I, I like working on indie shoots because there's more of um people are super professional and they know what they're doing, but the vibe is very um you just, it just feels like family and I'm not saying you should goof around but like there's room for that, but when I've worked like on a union set just as like a locations PA so that means I'm just holding a stop sign out in the cold all day like I just feel like never wanting to make a film ever again because it just it's so elaborate and complicated and rushed and and kind of like the the vibe is not the same so. Yeah, it's it's crazy. It's an art for sure. Is it it's is cool. it about money? Like, is it fear? Where? What? Okay, you know, am I gonna? I want to not imagine that. I mean, even a, a household like Steven Spielberg is like uh, really actually just a you know cr- crazy control freak who will have a very elaborate spreadsheet chart of every second that you're allowed to breathe. I I don't hmm, it it really depends and it depends on like the department and and all those things but I, I do think these people that make like big films like they are visionaries and they they are just making art the way they're going about it wouldn't be like my favorite approach but I think the bigger your film gets the more it has to be that way um just because it, it does cost a lot of money and it takes a lot of time and you you're on a really tight schedule like even on shorter shoots like you can't just you know fuck around <laughs> yeah like is the idea of a fear of money costs structured mm-hmm. um you know your day or whatever that's gonna play against creativity i think um, um i think it adds a, a different kind of pressure and i know in my experience like from making short sometimes it's like you can't get that shot you want because there's no time and you have to move on to the next thing but at the end of the day, and I don't know if this is just because, like, I'm very new at it in a way or because I have that, like, whimsy about me. But sometimes I'm like, it, it turns out how it's supposed to turn out and you should be satisfied with that. But I'm not saying you should just settle for that. But sometimes, like, you just have to learn to be like, OK, that's what we got and it's good enough. I hope that doesn't make me sound lazy. Money is a big stress, though, I think, when it comes to filmmaking. Because, like, photography, it's not cheap, but, like, once you have the gear, it is. And especially with, like, digital nowadays. But for filmmaking, like, it's this crazy process of, like, applying for funding. Maybe getting funding. Maybe not getting funding. Um, And then months of, of work to just shoot something for three days. And then a couple other months of putting it together and finally kind of just giving birth to this thing and and you don't know how it's always gonna look or how it's gonna feel or if you if you got what you wanted across it's really interesting watching your idea evolve um and and shift i think the phrase like it takes a life of its own or something like that yeah right it totally does and like the, the slash short i made i'm i'm really happy with it which is so not surprising because like everyone who worked on it did an amazing job but like I normally don't like my own work and I think that's really normal but for like the first time in my very short-lived career I'm like oh shit like I made something I'm really proud of and that I feel evokes what I wanted it might be on the funnier side even though that wasn't my intent but that's what it like it's kind of like having a baby. I haven't been there yet, but you make this thing, you, you make love to make it. And when it comes out, like, I think you, sh- you should love it anyway, even if. I like how young and idealistic you are. I, <laughs> I, I think uh, in principle, ideally, parenting is that by intuition and by nature. In practice, what we read, at least in this shitty headline news, I was talking to Kyle earlier today, too. I should be. Uh, uninstalling Google News. So I was trying to have a casual conversation and started talking about a war in Ukraine. Like, who gives a shit? But um, <clears throat> No, no, those things are important, though. But are it, they? I, I think, I don't know. It's hard because, like, I like reading news. And when I was younger, I'd listen to it all the time, but I would just get depressed. So I stopped for a long time. But I do think it's important to to see the ugliness of the world to kind of keep yourself in check and try to 
motivate yourself to hopefully be a better person because i think everyone's shitty we're all we're all shit humans but oh, i think are. there's good <laughs> there's good in us too or when you were describing um letting it have a life of its own which i think that a lot of people artists in particular control freaks um people that have a so-called strict vision and an orthodoxy even to them yeah um i mean it destroys them uh, but we've had one coffee where we talked spiritually and i think mm -hmm. that Leaving these things up to just the way they're going to be is an enormously powerful position. It's yeah. It's not always a pleasant one, but... It, it's yeah. liberating in a way because, I mean, speaking of control, like, I think it is hard just as humans and especially as creatives to let go of that because being creative kind of gives you like this um, god complex because you can make something and it's all in your power. But I think... Like that unexpectedness is also like always pleasantly surprising and sometimes really disappointing, but I, I, it's good to just kind of roll the dice and see where it lands. Mm. I'm not saying not to have expectations and you shouldn't always keep them low, but I think openness is like a, a thing you need to balance as a creative because things aren't always going to go your way. And I think that's also life too. I learned that early in my 20s. <laughs> early? How old are you, Ingrid? <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm a baby. Yeah, you early your twenties. You are in your goddamn early twenties. Yeah, I'm still Ingrid. kind of optimistic, and uh, it's good though. Yeah. I, this is why. <laughs> I mean, here's the thing with perspectives. I'm, you know, I'm meeting people like you. I'm meeting people like, you know, Dallas. I think is 18 or 19 this year. I'm also meeting other established artists that have been trying longer, and I, we don't have to name their names. <laughs> Uh, or people like me that are approaching it late in life, uh, regardless of whether I had a creative, you know, uh, bone in my body when I was however age, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. um, but I love meeting people in their late teens and early 20s because you guys haven't actually got, well, many of you haven't got the shit kicked out of you yet. Except Zaire, who jumped out of a moving car. Well, I, we have shit. to bring him back and talk about <laughs> that specifically. Like, you can't tell uh, I'm facing Kyle now. I'm not actually bringing that anecdote up with Ingrid. We should do a video <laughs> podcast so that people can see these interactions because I'm like side-eyeing Kyle okay. with comments. Yeah, and, and it doesn't matter because you're listening to my voice. I'm not good at audio podcasting. Talking <laughs> is hard. <laughs> Being a person is hard. Um, yeah, now I'm spinning out of control. Let's think about what we're going to talk about next. Well, I, you know, you're in your early 20s. You're making film. It's fascinating. I, in my early twenties, I was not making films. Uh, what, what, you know, what are you doing to get work? Like, what's? I'm basically like a freelancer now, which is really scary for me because it's not that I'm not a go getter, but like I just have a hard time asking people for things because I don't, I don't want to bother them, and it's something I really do need to get over because it's also like it's business and that's how it works. I just get random gigs here and there. I do miss the structure of a nine to five job just because it kind of kept me in line and it gave me a schedule. And like now there's days where like I wake up at 10 in the morning and I'm like, shit, <laughs> I could have used those two hours if I would have woken up at eight. And um, yeah, I'm just trying to find my footing right now on how to structure my schedule and actually get things done because it's not like I don't have anything to do. I do have quite a few endeavors and and things that I'd like to work on, but just giving myself that discipline is a learning lesson right now and being on my phone does not help <laughs> uh, yeah phone internet or not any of these things it's God. a blessing and a curse i i Kyle's do miss a, Kyle's a 10 year apple vet so we have to be careful like how apple. we talk about what are you technology talking about? <laughs> 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 no but i there um douglas copeland he has this uh, quote and it's like i miss my pre-internet brain and I'm really glad I got to taste my pre-internet brain because, like, my nephews are, are really young. My oldest one is, um, he's turning 14 next month. But he grew up with the internet. Like, meanwhile, I still got to play outside and I had Barbies and I didn't have a phone till I was 15 and I didn't have Instagram till I was, like, 19. But I, I'm glad I had that time to be bored and to just, like, feel like a kid because there's something about the internet that I feel makes you grow up so fast. But maybe I'm just old-fashioned that way. And, and just relationally, like, I feel like those are um, formative years and 
to be present because like I I have nothing against technology, but it doesn't always let me be as present as I'd like to be or um, as relational with people as I'd like to be. Like, if we're going out for coffee and we're on our phones, like, are we all there? Are we actually engaging in, like, a real conversation or, like, that human intimacy and contact? And, like, of course, social media does create, like, a certain way of being connected. Like, I wouldn't be able to be in touch with friends that live, like, on the other side of the world if it weren't for it. But I just... I wish that we were always more engaged as people um, and not so addicted to, like, picking up our phones every couple minutes. Watching you make the gesture, picking up your phone, reminded me, so we saw it on, an, is an, uh, ironically, a Netflix show, <laughs> but, uh, shit, I'll, I'm going to find it, but it's it's a 20-minute segments, and they're about weird people, but one of them was about technological addiction, mm-hmm. and I I have it. Like, you know, Kyle knows, like, my phone died. I had to get a new one. And then somehow uh, my son broke the lens in a way it's never been broken before. <laughs> it broke on the inside of the phone. Holy shit. And so it became a warranty replacement, which is cool. But I lost my phone for two hours. And I, I like to pride myself as an old guy who, you know, lived before the internet and all this kind of shit. I, I was, like, touching my ass pocket <laughs> the whole time walking around Chinook Mall. Not because I had anything to do. I wasn't expecting a message. It just has become. Well. Um, but, you know, it's interesting, too. Like, my wife, who's uh, the best, um, Helen, Spark Trade Helen, <laughs> on Instagram. Yeah. Um, she uh, told me that the key to Instagram was to get away from the idea of flicking and liking, but using DMs, which is how we became friends. Yeah. Which is how Kyle and I ended up meeting. The social portion of it, which has c- kind of not been lost, but is, you know, a different entity within it. Um, I mean, that's how I'm building perspectives. Uh, once, I, like you, I start thirsting for meeting people for coffee instead of liking their picture. Who gives a shit if I put a red heart on it? Yeah. I, I mean, it's important in its own social dynamic. But it also does create like that that um, addiction to like validation, I find. Yes. And I mean, there's been studies where it, like it releases endorphins in your brain if like you get a like. And I just think that's so messed up. I don't know. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. It's all very strange. Well, not to point the finger, but you've quit Instagram a few times. Yeah. And I always end up going back. And it, it, it honestly, it's rooted in this FOMO of like, oh no, like what if um, I got a message from this person I messaged like months ago and, or, yeah. <laughs> or um, I don't know, just like not knowing what's happening or, missing yeah, like that, or, that fear yeah. of missing out, especially opportunities. Cause like it is a really great platform for creatives. But it it can create like um really toxic mentalities where you're like my work isn't good enough or this person's doing better than me and like I hate feeling that way towards anyone who's just like trying to do what they love to do. So sometimes I like to get away from it. It's mm. it's like you brought up earlier about pivoting essentially, you know, with the end product after editing. You know, that that's a very wizened and <laughs> aged approach that you have at twenty three, which is that um, when you set out, and that's a big process, if you're talking about essentially eight months to a year to plan a short film, I'd pan, plan and execute a, a short film. I mean, there's so much intentionality that's going to mm-hmm. be there and so much expectation of what it needs to be to justify the time. But the reality is you do your best, you work, and then whatever comes out at the end is how it was always meant to be. Yeah, and and maybe that's like fatalistic, and I don't necessarily like thinking like that because I I think that can also be a dangerous way to to mm. approach things. But I think there's a balance in life where yeah, sometimes mm. it's meant to be that way. Sometimes you make a bad choice or a good choice, and it turns out the way it does. Because I I think we're also very much responsible for outcomes. But yeah, I don't know life <laughs> well, if anyone could have explained it we wouldn't have to live it that sounds really negative right <laughs> um but i actually kind of you know now that i said it out loud i kind of am going to ascribe to that i mean the reality is if i'm learning anything is that nobody knows what they're doing uh, whether rich or poor um you know yeah, seemingly everyone's, happy right? uh, everyone's lost nah, i just, just i wish we were more honest and open about it with each other because i think we'd I think it would just be nice to know that 
I, I you do know everyone's in the same boat once you like start talking to them but again with like social media like everyone's just like I have my shit together and it's pristine and pretty but it's like uh yeah. <laughs> do we though like <laughs> I love telling people that I have no idea what I'm doing I, I had a recent meeting with uh I don't know if I, yeah with the Calgary Public Library and they asked me in in a totally justified way what my my business plans approach and all that kind of stuff. Kyle's already giggling because he knows me pretty well now. <laughs> and I'm just like I have I have no idea what I'm doing. I have no plan for any of this stuff. I mean, the, I have a plan in the sense that I love what I'm doing. I love meeting all the people I'm meeting. We're creating and producing stuff. Mm-hmm. Outside of that, who gives a shit? <laughs> and who knows? Uh, and I was talking to my wife this morning. If somebody else, you know, like I, I got the projector just by fate. We project it. Now that people know that that's possible, if somebody else goes out and does it better, great shit. Yeah. Like, you know, either that becomes a challenge for me to do something even cooler or I'm okay <laughs> with that. But I got to not be this FOMO person where it's like, well, that should have been mine. And, you know, yeah. that competitive, almost, you know, ca- capitalistic. Because you mentality. have to make that effort too. <laughs> you can't just like sit in your FOMO and your anxieties. Like you, sh- you should do something about it. Yes. Getting out of that rabbit hole can be hard sometimes. It was not. I, I did really terrible things. Okay, so um, no, this is good. I I think uh, it's interesting, Ingrid, getting to know you. I mean, we've always talked about hanging out more yeah. often, but uh, you're always busy. Like, you're what are you doing now? Instead of being my December show, you're going away. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna go visit um, friends in Toronto and Montreal. Are you gonna give me something for my December year end show? I don't think so. Probably not. No. Okay, so we'll have to build a new show for you. You know what would be interesting, actually, <laughs> your short films. Yeah, so speaking of that, um, I might get them to you not in 2019, but 2020 once we do a festival circuit. 2020? Because there's rules. No, that's okay. (laughs) That's okay. And it's not that you can't follow the rules. Oh, you shouldn't because the rules suck. But uh, (laughs) shit, like I told you, I have no plans. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing in 2020. But I'll tell you this, Ingrid, if I'm doing this at 2020, uh, yeah, well, of course we'll show you. Yeah, I mean, I can talk about it now if you want me to. But (laughs) Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll do a promotional thing. First, I'll look at my producer and see how we're doing. We're doing pretty good on time. I, we're yeah. pretty quick today, but what's up? What what's else up? is up? Yeah. Um, <laughs> panic and mm. existential despair. What have you been doing for fun? <laughs> for fun? Yeah. Um, I've been hanging out with friends when I can and eating lots. Food so you, is great. Food is great, right? Mm-hmm. Hmm. So you, would you say that you had uh, some intuitional... Um, you know, relationship with food in the city? Um, food's complicated for me because, like, I had an eating disorder in high school. Sorry, is this appropriate to talk about? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, and I think a lot of people must have, like, an interesting relationship with food, um, especially women. Not saying that men don't have eating disorders because they definitely do. But um, I'm finally at a place where, like, I'm comfortable with food and I don't resent it or I... I I mean, it comes in waves, and I think it's something that you kind of live with for most of your life. But, yeah, like, I've just realized, like, it's it's good for me, and I'm not my body. Like, my body is a body, and it's here, but I'm much more than that. Uh, Food is weird because it's great, but it can also just, like, make you feel so many different things. See, I think that a person with, you know, some social dignity would feel like, you know, worried that they've been bullying you about food. But I think it's important because here's the thing. To bully someone about food? Uh, No, you specifically, (laughs) which is that, um, I mean, whether you feel comfortable talking about what you went through in high school or Mm -hmm. not, um, I mean, that relationship is the very thing that creates art, you know? Totally. I mean, if I was asking people to take product, I mean, you know what? If people wanted to give me product photography of a Big Mac, great. Mm-hmm. I mean, shit, that's cool too. But I don't know, Ingrid. I mean, uh, you know, whether it's for this project or the next, um, I'm not shy. I think that uh, these things need to be talked about. Definitely. Um, boys, girls alike. Um, because, you know, it goes back to the social media talk we're having. You know, this whether it's specifically FOMO. I mean, this thing predates but social like, media. But I'm, like, it's funny. Like, right now, I, the one thing I do appreciate about social media and outlets is this – 
body positivity movement where you are seeing all shapes and sizes and cultures. No nipples. <laughs> no, nipples. Yeah, no nipples. Not allowed. Yeah. But like when I was in junior high or in high school, like seeing a woman of color or someone just with like a bit more meat on their bones was so taboo and like not the desired look. So I really... And I don't think it's media's fault necessarily, but like I had this idea of what I should look like so ingrained in my mind and um, seeing that we're all so much more open to, to I guess, that diversity is, is really comforting and like it makes me really um, happy for, for younger people growing up in this generation because like finally, <laughs> like it's not always about being like Eurocentric and tall. Yeah, six um, feet, 100 pounds, blonde. Yeah, and like, yeah. And that's the men, yeah. <laughs> I, um, no, I, I get that. I think that it's interesting thinking about Calgary versus Toronto, for example. Mm. You know, back in Toronto, I used to think about what it might be, for example, for me to have grown up in Korea. Um, I think about that a lot too, like just being an immigrant like if I would have grown up back home, how things... Where are you from? I'm from Colombia. That's right. Yeah, yeah, you told me that. When did you come here? Um, We moved to Canada when I was four, and we lived in Vancouver first, and then we moved here when I was like eight. Okay. And been here ever since. Yeah, Calgary's a unique city uh, hmm. in a lot of these factors, uh, not only because it's predominantly by statistics Caucasian, but the Caucasians come from goddamn like giant cultures where everybody's six foot four here kyle and uh you know it's no shame <laughs> no, no it's fine kyle. Oh, fuck, kyle no um it's interesting coming from toronto you know uh we're in toronto we are right uh, not right sorry not rightfully is the wrong word that's a toronto way to put it but um we are uh reputationally so toronto centric and we don't think about anything so people in toronto believe that Canada is multicultural. It's bullshit. It's actually <laughs> not true. Um, people in Toronto think that Canada is urban and, you know, uh, hip, and, and it's not. It's <laughs> That's it's, Toronto. <laughs> yeah, that's Toronto. And that's why Toronto people uh, dislike Vancouverites, because Vancouverite is actually pretty multicultural and pretty hip, and Toronto mm -hmm. just won't believe that any... You know, it's just a weird uh, thing, being <laughs> a human being. But coming to Calgary, Calgary's actually pretty hip. I, I actually like Calgary quite a lot. But I've been told by residents that's because I've only been here six years. Um, and when I walk around and I meet, you know, people of color, of gender, of whatever, art and creativity, there's that tension there. And I I don't know, I'm okay exploring it. It's a fascinating one. Um, but it must be interesting for you to grow up in that. Um, put a lot of pressure, I think. Yeah, yeah. like... I'm thankful for Calgary. I think it's like a petri dish of creativity because it's so small. Um, so there's more opportunities for you to kind of like work with other people. And, and it's really nice. But there comes a point where you're like, I need to move because I, I need something bigger. Calgary's huge. It's one. Well, now it's one point two and a half million people. It's it is. But like the arts community is so small. And mm -hmm. like, yeah, sometimes it feels like you hit the ceiling and you just don't know what else to make or. You don't, and you don't want to be pretentious either. Or like, oh, my work's so different, and like, I'm because there there are like niche groups that you're like, we're all in the same boat. But they're kind of like, well, I'm better than you, <laughs> and you're like, ah, <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> um, so yeah, sometimes I I like I'd like to go back to school, and I'd like to go to school in Montreal, but I'd also love to come back home and and bring what I learn. Didn't um, didn't you say? Are you going to Montreal? Well, I am going right now to visit some friends, uh, but um, yeah, I need to finish my school application. In post. Uh, uh, but number two, I mean, what what are you plugging? What are you doing? What are you up to? Um, I'm currently part of Herland, which is like a female mentorship program for filmmakers. Wait, I, I didn't word that properly, but I guess you'll get the idea. Um, so yeah, I'm just in pre-production for a project that I pitched to them and I get to make it in the new year. Oh, cool. So I'm just doing workshops and stuff with them currently. Yeah, it's exciting. I'm looking, I'm looking forward to it. That's exciting. Um, is there anything that you've created, are working on, that will be publicly viewable soon? Soon? Um, so I just finished my short, All Saints is what it's called. Um, like, it's officially wrapped, like, post and everything three weeks ago, and I've just been submitting it to festivals. So depending on what it gets into, it'll be publicly screened. So I'm embracing the rejection letters that I'll get. 
but it's good practice. <laughs> As my shrink told me, you know, if you send out 10 and you get one, that's a hundred percent success rate. Preach. <laughs> Some of these perspective shifts where I used to, yeah, I would get hung up, not just on the 90. Just yeah. Like, well, I, I think a big part of it is not taking yourself so seriously and learning that as an artist because sometimes I think we do get not that I'm an artist but like just as a creative like you you get caught up in like oh like I need to be the next this or I need to be that but it's like you just need to be you and, and sometimes it's okay to be goofy and silly and rejected <laughs> so yeah right well um not artist Ingrid Vargas <laughs> um thank you for sitting with us welcome thank you for having me hmm. is that is that right no no, <laughs> no i'm confused uh, no thank you so much ingrid oh, thank you uh, hopefully we'll hang out soon and uh, is there anything else we should talk about you mentioned all saints a lot we should like buy the rights of one of their songs just to throw in here every time i, <laughs> I say it <laughs> <laughs> all right i'll stop talking okay okay thank you have a good night everyone it's midday <laughs> Not a dream Fall out From being blown To smithereens I found the sweet silence In your face I found the sweet silence In your face Oh, you just heard a great new track by a band here called thomas thomas they are uh, amazing all in yellow and about to debut an ep soon they gave us the incredible honor of uh, using their amazing track gracious host for our uh, podcast and i just wanted to uh, let you all know that you should be definitely checking them out on instagram and once they're on spotify and apple and all that stuff we're gonna let you know Thanks to Thomas Thomas and all the other amazing musical uh, people that we're meeting through this project. Uh, this podcast has been brought to you by Media Lab YYC. Kyle Marshall runs this amazing little outfit here in downtown Calgary. Um, and we wanted to say this. Here at Media Lab YYC, we help you share your stories with the public. Video, audio, business, personal. Let us help you take your idea to the finish line.